Hello and welcome to my channel, Kaylee Creations. I'm Kay and this is part three of the Autumn Sunset Garden Fairy mini album set. And in the first tutorial, we built the album. The second tutorial, part two, uh, we put all the papers on and the fold outs and everything on the, on the um, album and completed the album. And so now we're going to do the the little fence that the album sets in, the little box fence, and the um, wooden plaque. And so, but before we get to that, I do want to go through all the Rene Bouquet products that you will be using. And, <clears throat> excuse me, so I have this um, beautiful ivory lace and it comes by the yard, and so you're only going to need seven inches, which is the length of the album. And so this just goes on the album cover right here. And so I will have a link to all the products in the description box below. And then you have these um, beautiful board tuck-ins, which is the fall or autumn tuck-ins and um, these I used all throughout on I used this on the on the wooden plaque I used it on the fence I used them throughout the album um, just anywhere where you want to tuck in some little fall pieces and if you watch the previous video you'll see where I tucked in all the pieces on on the in the album and we'll go over where I tucked them in on the fence in a little bit and then you're going to need two of these pumpkin um, laser cut chipboard pieces and one goes on the album cover and one is on the wooden plaque and then you also need and I pulled them out of the packaging um, okay hid them. <laughs> You're also going to need a pack, one package of these um, fall corners in the size small. And one goes on to the wooden plaque and one goes on the fence. And, and then the final piece of beautiful board is this printed beautiful board and it's the Sweet Garden Fairy. And it comes with the little um, transparent wing and you get one facing each way. And so I use this one on the wooden plaque and I use this one on the fence. And then, um, and I I, was, I reordered all this stuff so I could share with a friend, but um, I forgot to order the hummingbirds, so I just have this one to show you. But they come in packages of three, small, medium, and large, and this is the medium size. Um, I used the small on the cover of the album here, and I used the large on the wooden plaque, which I'll show you in a minute. And... Then we have this, I use this package of butterflies, which is the Champagne Dreams, and I use the small on the album and these two on the wooden plaque, and um, okay, and then I used this um, salted caramel I used the large butterfly inside the album. And then I used this butterfly here. And this this is the tiny treasure size and there's come in a package of 5. And I got the gold antennas. You have your choice of color of antennas. So I used gold um, on this salt de caramel, I've got copper, but you could get gold. 
either gold or copper I think would work in this album. Um, this Champagne Dream, I prefer the gold with it. It's just softer. And uh, so that's what I have here on the cover. I've got the gold antennas. Um, so I think that is, oh, no, that's not quite it. So I also, I also used a couple of, I got these um, old gold um, mulberry roses. And I used these little tiny ones inside the album, which I talked about in the last tutorial. And I did dry brush them with white gesso just to soften the, the color a bit. And, um, and then I used on the plaque, I used these um, honey roses. And... Uh, so I also had a package of the wild honey roses, so I think I used one of those on the wooden plaque, but, um, and you know, one of these would work as well, um, in, in case you don't want to buy two packages of roses, but who never has enough roses, so anyway, so I did buy the, I did buy the honey rose and the wild honey rose, and, uh, Let's see, I think that's it. So um, let's get started with the fence. I did start to do this tutorial last night and um, without getting into too much detail, I've been having to do my videos really super late at night and I fell asleep making the video. I literally fell asleep as I was doing the video. <laughs> so um, anyway, I had an opportunity to do this this afternoon and so um, I've already started um, showing how I did the fence, so it's kind of halfway done. But it's super easy, and um, you'll see in a minute how easy it is. Um, first of all, you're going to need a piece of chipboard, and oops, see, I'm just ripping it off. I gotta set it down because it's not quite on there. Um, so I used a piece of 12 by 12 medium weight chipboard and you're going to cut a piece out that's two and a half by five and a half and you're going to paint it with either white gesso um, which I think really coats really well um, so that was my preferred thing but you could use um, some kind of white acrylic paint or or maybe a chalk white paint and um, Anything just to cover it. I, I did, I did um, do about two, three coats on it because um, that chipboard does absorb. And look at this first piece came off anyway because I pulled on it. The gravity of the other side pulled it off. Um, so anyway, so that's um, what I did to start off. Was you need the bottom of your the bottom of your um, fence board and then um, I did ink it inside but you don't necessarily have to because it never really shows so that was kind of a waste of time really <laughs> but I mean if you want to you can um, I did ink up the fence just a little bit with the scattered straw Tim Holtz ink pad and um, and then I also um, use that scattered straw on on these um, these ends and on the pumpkin, on the laser cut pumpkin, I used the scatter straw just here and there on the ends and on all the little bits and pieces too. And so it's really not hard. What you what what I use is this wooden fence from Hobby Lobby. And this is the product here. It will do two fences, so there's quite a bit in this, and it's in the wood section um, where you get your. It's on the same. It was on the same aisle as the board that I got, and so this is the board, and it's it's approximately, I think it's like 11, 11 and a half by nine inches on the back. This is what I used. Um, and it's just a pine board and I did have to sand these edges just a smidge 
and um, but all this was at Hobby Lobby in the in the woods section. Okay, and this this wire that's around here is very pliable. You can, it's easily to bend. It was easy to cut with just some wire cutters, the wire, and so um, you only need about a little less than half to do the one fence, and so that's like five five of these. Um, I'm not sure what these are called. <laughs> these little picket uh, slats or or pieces of the fence. Um, there's five going across the ends, eleven going across the sides. Or I guess I should say front and back, and I guess five on the sides. So five on the sides, eleven on the front and back, and so and so I know I just snipped the wire with my wire cutters. And to get it to meet up in the corner, this corner here, um, I had to really cut the wire down all the way. Because um, you can see here on this end here where I have not cut it, you can see where the wire, I hope you can see if you can, you can see where the wire's twisted there to keep that wooden slat in. And I had to cut that down to get those two ends to meet so that my fence is flush on the bottom of the chipboard. So because I had to cut it so close, which you can see here, I cut it all the way. I hope you can see I've cut it all the way down to that slat. So it wasn't holding, this wanted to slide right out. So I did have to super glue that together so that it would this one would stay in place and so once that was done and dry then I just started gluing onto my board and it really will hold once it's once it's all on um, the reason it just came off now is because you know this is heavy and gravity pulled it right off this chipboard but once it's all once it's all on there it'll be very it'll be very secure um, and I found for me it was easier to use super glue. Um, um, you could, I suppose you could use hot glue, but um, I just found that the hot glue made too much of a gap in between the fence and it just dried really quick and it would ooze out in these little globs of glue, which I don't like. And you know the super glue was just for me better to use and and so you just got to be patient that's all there is to it and then um, so you just glue one side let it dry glue this side and then fold it over glue this side you know and you want to do that because when you bend it um, these are going to want to pull away from the chipboard and you want these fence pieces to be flush against that chipboard as tight as possible. And so if you're patient and let it dry, then it, you know it's going to work for you. If you try to do it all at once, it's not going to happen. It's just going to pull on one side or the other. So just do one side at a time. Um, if you find that it's not quite fitting right, maybe you need to cut your chipboard just a little bit bigger. Or maybe you need to cut it a little bit smaller. So just, um, you know, but if you do one side at a time, you should be able to push it together and make it fit. Now on that very end, when it comes together here, um, you're going to want that last, that last um, slot meeting up with the first one on the corner here. And that's why I cut that wire all the way down because it, it was just going to fit snugger, snugger if that's a word, more snug on the, <laughs> on the corner there. And um, it's just going to kind of overlap and everything. Um, on this one, I ended up, I had to push that slat higher. I don't know if you can see, it's just slightly higher than this one. And that's okay. I don't think it's really noticeable. I don't think anybody noticed until I just now when I said it. So, um, you know, if your wire still isn't, you know, if your wires are still sticking out too much, um, 
just make one a little higher than the other, nobody will even notice. So uh, that's how I put the fence together. And so I'll just do this one edge again, just to show you what I did. So I, I didn't put it along the chipboard because obviously it's not, you're gonna have glue in the middle between these fence pieces. So I put it on the fence instead. I just ran it along the bottom there. And then I just held it there. And I wish, you know, there was some kind of, I wish I had some kind of clamp that would hold it there, but I didn't have anything that would clamp it that way. So I just had to hold it for a bit. And you might have to bend your wire a little bit to get it to go flat the way you need it to. And when they say instant glue, I don't think it's that instant, do you? <laughs> anyway, so there I've got one side done and I will let that dry and before I do all my sides. And let me just set this over here, actually. Okay, so now decorating the fence. Once you've got it all glued together and you can choose to ink the fence after it's put together on the board, or you can do it before either way. And um, let me put the lid back on this glue. And so don't forget to glitter your, and I showed in the last tutorial how to glitter your, your beautiful board. And so the first um, corner I put here on the fence right here and you don't want it to stick below the bottom or else it won't it won't stand straight it'll be tilted so make sure that this does not go below the bottom of this leaf does not go below the bottom of the fence and then it's okay if it sticks out on the left a little bit because mine does i think it's pretty that way and so anyway just get your um um, you can either use super glue or art glitter glue, something with a fine tip glue. Um, probably doesn't matter which glue you use, but um, and then just get that on there. And then these flowers here are from Prima, and I talked about that in the previous tutorial. And so there's a package of these, and you get a small and a larger. So I use the small on the front here, just like that. And, and it is pliable, so if you need to pull it apart or adjust it a little bit, you can, you know, to your liking. And so that just sits right there. And then I used these, and I love these. I love this set of flowers. Um, they're just such a nice size for fillers. <laughs> and they have the little leaves on the bottom, which I did not, did not use on this project, but... Um, and so I just used a couple of these little tiny flowers here on the on the corner. And then I just I um, glued my fairy. I wanted to make make it look like she was just barely lighting or touching on the fence or the flowers. And uh, it's almost like she's still kind of in flight, but just kind of at a standstill. And so, and I even wanted her little bare feet to show. So I made sure, cause I thought that was so cute that she has little bare feet. <laughs> so I made sure her little bare feet were showing and, um, and I just glued her on. And so she's really only glued on. Um, if you can see on the back here, she's glued on to the fence or to the beautiful board, really not really the fence. Um, if you can see back here, so her feet are, are glued on to that that leaf there that's on this piece of this corner piece 
and then this side here she's glued on back here and then I think I mentioned in the other tutorial that I removed the black foam tape that was helping secure her little transparent wing in place and put that flower there I mean you're not really going to see too much from the back side but just in case I just thought it would look prettier than the black foam and and then on the back side, and I thought about doing stuff on the sides, but then I thought I really don't want to. I want to be able to um, group it on the sides without anything there. And it does need to be overdone, you know. And uh, so I put, sometimes I do have a product with editing. So, <laughs> so I said, no, I'm not putting anything on the sides. So then I used the large piece on the back here, and I just, I glued this on first. And I kind of just had to play around with it and the wire inside there. And not two, no two are going to be the exact same. This one tends to, is folding a little different than this one. And I feel like the, the these leaves aren't as tall as this one. Um, so you're just going to have to play around with it. You, you're going to need two packages of these. You're going to put one of these on the fence and one on the the wooden plaque. If you don't like the way this is standing up on the fence, try the other package. Because this one really won't matter. It won't really matter which one's on your on your board or on your plaque. So if this one isn't just kind of cooperating with you the way you like, um, get the other one from the other package and see if that works. Um, on this one, I did kind of have a hole there. So I put one of these um, this rose right here in this package, I put that right there in the center. So if you have a hole, you know, fill it up with, um, I use this whole package of flowers, so be careful not to use too many on your fence. Um, so just kind of fill it in as you can. And then you can also use, you know, use another, I could have used another piece of this beautiful board in there too, maybe. And so these are just the little tuck-ins. I used this un this acorn here. I almost said unicorn. I've got unicorns on the brain because I'm contemplating a project, you know, <laughs> and I've got unicorns on the brain. But um, and then this leaf here is the same leaf as this one. And then I put this leaf on the back just to give it some height and some sturdiness behind my my flowers. And of course you could. I did have a couple left over, so you could add, you know, a couple here and there more if you like. And you could also add a couple pieces more in your album, too. Um, so anyway, that's all there was to it. The fence, that was it. So it came together really quick, very, aside from the drying, it came together very quick and very cute. And I was really happy with it. I'd never done anything like this before. And... So I'm probably going to do it more often because I just love, I just love how my albums have a home, you know, to set in. I think it's really fun. So that's all there was to the fence. And for the, um, the board or the plaque on the back, you can see that I have used this. This is where the second 12 by 12 sheet of paper comes in. Um, the first one was the collage paper that used in the album, and this is the second one because this is nine inches by 11 and a half, so you do need a 12 by 12 sheet of paper to cover the entire thing. Unless you want a piece, um, well, no, you can't even do that because it's nine across, so yeah, you're going to have to have a 12 by 12 piece of paper. And so this is the one that I chose to do, but you know what? If you have this paper already and you have the 12 by 12, Whatever, really, it's just the back. So any any of the papers will go. I just happened to use this one, and this is called the Fall Flight. So the Autumn Sunset Collection Fall Flight is the paper. And, but yeah, if you have if you have some paper, and you want to save that one for something else because it's so pretty. That was my favorite paper in the collection. So I used all five of them from the 8x8 pad on this project. And so I did use a piece on the front. So it's this paper here and I cut three inches from the bottom and put it across here. So
So let me get that. That's not it. That's the piece I cut it from. Right here. So this this goes on the bottom here, and I don't think any two plaques are going to be exactly identical. This one seems a little more narrow than the one I did, um, maybe by an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to have, because I really didn't have to trim this paper when I put it on my, my first one. This one tends to be a little more narrow, so I'm going to have to trim this an eighth of an inch off. Um, but that's okay, because um, um, don't worry about it too much, because you're going to want to... Um, distress the edges. So I distress the edges with scissors like I did with the uh, entire album. And I did use a bit of ink on uh, the scattered straw on it, on the corners especially, and a little bit on the edges. And um, not a whole lot, just a little. And um, But before you put it on your board, you're going to want to paint your beveled edges here and then the edge here of the of the plaque, you're going to want to paint that with an, a vintage white or some kind of an off-white. It's not a very yellow white, but it's not a very bright ivory either. Um, I found that this color was perfect matching this paper. And so this is the Folk Art Vintage White number 515. And I got this at Hobby Lobby as well. Um, so. And I only had to use just a little smidge, so. Um, but if you have one at home that you can work, that's fine. I just, I just thought I did not have this color white at home, and so I thought this vintage white was perfect. So to paint all the edges, and then, and then distress your paper. And once it was on the plaque, and I glued it all down and everything, I distressed it again. I just took my. Once the paper was on, I just took my scissors and I even just did that across the board and just distressed, made sure it was distressed all the way. And nothing too crazy. I didn't rip, like really rip it or anything, but you could do that if you want. And then this piece here, I just used this full sheet. And you know, depending on your plaque, you may have to trim it down a bit. It looks like I might have to trim about a sixteenth of an inch on each side on this one. So, um, and then I just make sure you ink it and distress this edge before you glue it down. Because this is going to be, you're going to put this one down first and then you're going to overlap with this one. And... Um, and it's really not going to be shown a whole lot because the ribbon's going to be co covering it or the lace, I should say. But you know, you just never know what's going to peek out. So I did distress this first before I glued it down. And then on your on your wooden plaques, you want to just make sure they're really just um, glued down good so that they're not going to peel up off your board. Um, you could even. You know, if you wanted, you could, I guess you could use a Mod Podge over it. I just don't know how well that will work with the distressed edges. Um, if you are worried about covering it, I would use a spray rather than like a, a liquid to give it a little bit of a, a, a clear coat sealing on it, maybe. Uh, I did not do that with mine. Um, so, and um, then, you know, once the paper was on, and I made sure it was glued on. I did even just, I like to make sure my edges have a lot of glue and that, that everything's glued on. And then I use my, I have a nail file that, well, you know, you've seen them, those nail files that they use in the salons. That's what I used to sand <laughs> on my boards. So I glue it all on and then I, and then I sanded those edges down like this just to make sure it's all um, it almost like blends it into the board when you do that. And you can do that on chipboard too, by the way, when you're making an album or something. Um, that's what I like to do when I glue paper on a chipboard or wood. And then, um, and then I, like I showed you before, I took my scissors and made sure it was still distressed, added a few ink, a little more ink in places if I wanted. And when I got it just right, then I 
cut a piece of chipboard that is six and a quarter round. Um, six and a quarter because that just happened to be the cereal bowl that was sitting next to me when I was contemplating on making this project. I just grabbed the cereal bowl and said, hey, you know. And uh, so anyway, um, yeah, so six and a quarter, and it's not a very clean cut, but it's not going to be shown. You're going to cover up all these edges. It's just to give it a little more height off the board. And so six and a quarter circle, and you can cut it out of that same, you have room to cut it out of that same 12 by 12 you use to cut your board for your fence. And then you're going to take this from the four by six journaling card pad, and you're going to glue this. And it's going to be glued approximately about there. But my suggestion is, to lay everything out and then um, once you've got everything the way you want it take a picture and then start peeling off the layers and and then when you get down to here then just glue it in place I would glue this in place before I actually glued my my circle onto the paper um, Anyway, once you've taken it very carefully, taken everything off and got your placement for this, and this this little thing should be a guide. If you cut a little off, if you have to cut a little off the paper, cut a little off each end, so that this is still in the center, this butterfly, and that's your guiding point where to put this in the center. I think mine's off just a little bit, and that's okay. If it's off a little bit, who cares? And uh, so once this is glued on, then I knew, then I could just trim and cut that off. Okay, but yeah, it's gonna it's gonna end up being up higher rather than lower because you're gonna have your pumpkin laser cut piece here, and um, I think I had it this way. Yeah, I had it this way, and you're gonna have your pumpkin piece here, and um, so anyway, uh, and oh, you know what I do want to say. Um, these, this beautiful board is so beautifully, intricately cut. I mean, just look at that, how intricate that is. Um, and I recently mentioned that is because you do need to be careful with these leaves. I mean, they are just really on there with a little thin thread of chipboard. And if you're too rough with them, which sometimes I am, so when you're inking these or um, whatever, just make sure you have a delicate hand. Um, um, this one I had out and I had it, I did not have it, I did not keep it, I got lazy, sometimes I get lazy. I did not put it back in the little plastic packaging when I was done. I had it in my box and, and these two leaves fell off. So, you know, just don't be like me and be rough and lazy. Um, you know, when you're not using them or when you're inking them and stuff, just make sure you're you know, just be careful. I, I would set it down on something and hold my finger there and then ink the edges with my tool, my little tool. That's how I would ink it. Just hold on to those leaf stems so that they don't come off. Just be very careful. Anyway, um, but I'd rather, I'd rather they be delicate and cut beautifully like this than be clunky and yucky. <laughs> so... I'm not complaining, I'm just saying be nice to your beautiful board. Okay, so anyway, the beautiful board's going to sit right here. And so, because I didn't want the words covered up, it, it's going to sit higher, I guess was my whole point. And so I'm just going to show you how I laid everything out um, generally, and then I will show you a close-up of my board so you can see the placement and maybe pause the video and you can see where everything goes and um, but I will give you the basic four things so you're gonna put one of these in this corner and I did like the idea that my um, leaves were sticking out almost at the very end here of the of the plaque 
and almost to the point here. You don't want to go all the way down because your lace is gonna you're gonna cover that with your. Um, I used a crochet lace. Um, Renee Bouquet's has a crochet lace that I will um, put in the description box below. Um, I used it here on this album. Well, I won't show you that right now. Anyway, I used it on another album. Um, I used it in my Alice in Wonderland album. Um, there, I think it was... Um, uh, she has like two or three different styles. I think it was the second one. Anyway, I will put a link to that below. Um, so I just did put the crocheted lace across the edge here to cover up the edge of this paper to make it look like it's all, you know, one thing. And then I did tie, did tie the yarn. So I've got the lace here. This, this is not the Renee Bouquet lace. This is lace I've had in my stash and I just, I try to use what I have before I buy new. Um, it's just economical for me. <laughs> And then, um, and then I used this lace to tie around, and um, it's actually not lace; it's a yarn. It was in it's a it was in the yarn section that I got quite a few years ago, and a little has gone a long way. And I'm gonna be so sad when it's gone. I'm gonna cry, really, because I absolutely love this trim. <laughs> and uh, anyway, and then I just tied it, like, wrapped it around, tied it in a bow, and stuck one of those little itty bitty flowers in the center there so um so I guess my point was you don't want to come all the way down with your with your leaf you don't want it to be covered and then your other corner is going to be here and you know you can put it I think I put mine this way but you know if it's working better for you to do it this way do it but I think it fits better this way with this um, fall, this maple leaf on the bottom. And um, once you've got your your um, journaling card glued onto this circle and trim it, then you can glue it to the center of the paper. And then you can, and then once that part's done, um, then you can start rebuilding your your elements here. But like I said, I did all this first, and then took everything carefully off before I glued everything down. So I kind of did a, a a trial run and took a picture, and then did it over again. So I put this here, this here, and then I put my um, my second set of um, whatever these are <laughs> and I put this bottom one here or this bigger one on the bottom and then I put the smaller one here like that so that was my basic layout and then on my And then on my roses, you're going to get three of this size in that package and one of that smaller size. And so unless you get two packages, um, I did a small and a mini here, but this was from a different package of flowers. But you know what? It's okay because if you just get the one package, this is perfectly fine. It really is. Um, it's going to look beautiful either way. So don't stress over little things like that. They're, it, they're both, they both work. And, or you might choose to put the other bigger one here. But hey, who am I to say don't get both packages of flowers because I love buying flowers. <laughs> flowers are like, ah, oh, butterflies and flowers, my favorite thing. Except for the bee. I love the Renee Bouquet's bees. <laughs> oh my gosh, those bees with the transparent wings. Oh, love those too. I think that was the first thing I ever ordered from Renee Bouquet's was that bee. Anyway, so you're just going to want to, I, I, I kind of think you kind of want to angle things out. So it's okay if you've got a little more 
angled out this way. So if you've got a few more leaves sticking out here and a few more leaves sticking out there, that's okay to have a little bit of a line going this way. So it's not a, it's not going to be a perfect circle. Um, but I did just barely, you know, take a few of the tuck ins and, and pull it out this way too, but not as much as it's going out this way, if that makes sense. <laughs> At least I hope my, my ideas are making sense. And so I just try to kind of, um, I try to balance things out, but I also try to think in triangles. And what I mean by that is when you're doing colors, it's just more eye appealing if things are done in threes. And so it doesn't have to be a perfect triangle. So for example, if I have this yellow here, I'm going to have this yellow here, and then I'm going to put a yellow here, and that makes a triangle of that yellow. Okay, so you're going to want to think in triangles when you're, whenever you do anything with scrapbooking or laying out or your layouts or anything, try to think, if you have this color of yarn here, try to think in triangles. So, um, so I used um, these um, honey roses here. And you can use more than what I've used. You know, this is your this is your board. If you've got more flowers to use, then use them. Okay, I'm kind of was saving mine for some more projects, but um, and I'm taking advantage of the fact that I have Prima flowers to match, so then I can use my. I have a Halloween project that I I want to use these with. So, um, um, but you could definitely use more of the Renee Bouquet roses. Like say you didn't weren't able to get all the prima flowers, use more of these. Um, they'll, those will work beautiful as well. And um, so I just filled it with these flowers, these flowers, and then these flowers. Whatever I didn't use on the fence and the album, I used on here. I did have some of these left and some of these left. I used every single one of these because these are great little fillers on on my wreath. And so I would just start building up the flowers and making it look like I want and just play around with it, move them around. To me, that is, you know, some people say it's therapeutic for them to do fussy cutting. For me, it's therapeutic to play with flowers <laughs> and butterflies. So I, I mean, I've just spent a long time just rearranging the way I want it and, and getting it exactly right. And then, and then don't forget to, you're going to be having your, uh, make sure that you have a, a good place for your fairy to set in nicely. And um, so don't forget that. And and she will glue on to layers. So if you can see, if I can show you down here, she is not glued in on the middle there. She's glued in on the edge of her wing there. And see, you could even see that her feet came off. I might need to glue her down a little bit more right there just to keep her more secure in there. Um and glue her feet down a little bit more because her feet are not, she's barely hanging on there. <laughs> she's hanging on by her wing right now. I need to re-glue maybe. Oh, no, she's glued right there. Maybe I need to re-glue right here. Um, but anyway, just have a nice place for her to sit. The same with your hummingbird. I did put put extra foam tape underneath him just to, just to keep him um, under his belly there, he's he's secured pretty good with that foam tape. There's a little hole there where there's no flowers. And um, so you don't have to fill the whole thing with flowers. You can have little holes, and then that's where your, your foam tape will go. And then the butterflies, you know, just make it so that they have, you know, wherever they sit nice. It doesn't have to be exactly where mine are. If they're a little farther apart or one's angled a little differently, it doesn't matter as long as the way you've arranged your flowers is just sitting nicely. Um, I hope that helps. Um, and if you feel like, oh, I've never done this before, there's really no wrong, okay? Just just keep playing with it. Like I said, I will spend hours doing one thing because it's just fun for me and I want it to be the way I want it. I figure if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the way I want. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, I didn't quite have this done. It's been an hour. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why it takes me forever to get anything done because I'm sitting here playing with my toys. Um, I feel like a kid in the bathtub, you know, how they just spend hours in the bathtub playing with their toys. <laughs> um, so that's how I am with my craft projects sometimes. So um, 
anyway, just have fun with it. It's just, it's just fun. And uh, you'll be happy with it when you're done because you'll have it just the way you want it. And uh, if it's not, a, if it looks a little different than mine, that is okay because it's going to be beautiful, right? I mean, how can you go wrong with all the beautiful flowers and everything? So um, anyway, that's, that's the end of my tutorial. And if you do have any comments, um, please. Uh, let me know if you have a finished project you'd like to show me. I'd love to see your finished project when it's done. I'd love to see how it came out. And um, so if, if you have any uh, comments or questions, I will try to contact you as soon as possible. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe because there's going to be more beautiful projects coming. And, and also... If you click on the little bell, you'll be notified whenever I have a new project. So anyway, thank you for watching and have a great fall season. Hopefully you live somewhere where it's beautiful and you're enjoying fall. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.